All right, guys, so here we have two forces acting on a part, and we're going to be looking for the magnitude of the resultant force as well as its direction measured counterclockwise from the positive x-axis. So we're told that we have this force over here, uh, force F, and it has an angle theta. So the force is given as 450 newtons, and then the angle is given as 60 degrees from the positive x-axis, and then the other force is 700 newtons, and it's going to be 15 degrees below the negative x-axis. Now, you can uh, approach this problem two ways. You could either break down these forces by components, and I actually do have a video on that uh, if you want to see that. Um, but you can also use the law of parallelograms, and that just basically states that if I were to transpose these two forces, so let me do that here. So if I have the 700 newton force acting something like this, and then that 450 newton force acting something like this, um, I should be able to create a parallelogram just by repeating these forces. So if I basically just take this uh, 450 newton force and create a parallel line, with the tail from the tip of the 700 newton force, something like that. And then likewise, take the, uh, take the 700 newton force and create another parallel line going something like that. And these should be a little bit more parallel than I drew them, but um, you'll have a 700 newton force here, uh, 700 newton force here, and these two are both going to be 450 newtons. And again, this is not drawn to scale, but I think you get the idea here of um, if you were to cl close this here, you'd essentially have a uh, parallelogram, right? Um, and so, yeah, now let's look at our angles here. So we'll have this angle here, this angle here, and those angles are going to be equal. And then same thing with this angle and this angle, right? That's just the uh, properties of a parallelogram, and we know that all four of those angles are going to add up to 360 degrees. Uh, now, let's try to get some of these angles. So I guess that we'll start with this angle here. Um, so if I want to take this angle, well, based off what's given, we have to get whatever the angle of this arc is, right? So here we're told that we have 60 degrees from the qua uh, first quadrant, and then 15 degrees from the second quadrant. So if I take what's remaining of the, of the first quadrant, we have 30 degrees here. And then here we have 90 degrees, we have the whole second quadrant, and then the third quadrant, we have 15 degrees. So if we add those up, we have 135 degrees. 135 degrees, right? Because this is the original 700 newton force, and this is the original 450 newton force, and then the angle between them is uh, 135 degrees. And again, the opposite angle is going to be equivalent. And like I said, the whole parallelogram is going to sum to 360 degrees. Um, and then we have two equal angles, so 90 degrees between those two angles, so then they should each be 45 degrees. And now if you look, it adds up to 360 degrees. Now, what the law of parallelograms tells us in statics is that if you draw a diagonal line from the tails of two vectors, um, like so, that should yield you with your resultant force. So we'll call that FR, your resultant force. And notice there's only one place you can really do that. Because over here, you see you have a, a tip here. Here you have two tips, and here you have one tip. Um, here you, you don't have any tips here, you just have two tails. So if you draw a diagonal from the two tails into the opposite uh, angle, that should be the direction of your resultant force. But before we find the direction, let's just use the uh, let's just use this here, this diagram here, to find the um, magnitude of that resultant force or the diagonal of this parallelogram. Um, so we're going to use the law of cosines to do that. And so the law of cosines just states that we have our our resultant force squared equals the 450 squared plus 700 newton side squared minus two times 450 times 700, times the cosine of the angle that's opposite of the resultant force, because the resultant force side is what we're looking for, so the resultant force's opposite side is the 45 degree angle here. So 45 degrees. Now I'm actually just going to take the square root of both sides to get rid of that exponent, that uh, square exponent on the resultant force. And if you do, and plug this into your calculator, you'll have that the resultant force here equals just about 497 newtons. So here we have the magnitude, and um, now we're going to look for the direction next. So notice that uh, because we drew a diagonal here, we have two triangles that were just created from this parallelogram, right? So you have this triangle here and then this triangle here. Uh, now what we're looking for is for the angle is we're looking for this angle here. So let me just draw our resultant force here. Uh, it'll be an easier visual, I think. If I draw the resultant force going something like, like that, right? And that's going to be a resultant force. We were asked to find this angle here, and I'm going to actually just draw that in red as well. Um, so this angle here is the... Is the, is the direction you're looking for, because that's the direction measured counterclockwise from the positive x-axis. Um, 
So now if we take a look at our triangle here, uh, and we, we're going to try to figure out what the angles are inside of this triangle. Well, just first of all, we need to decide which triangle we're going to use. Now, if you, if you take a closer look at this triangle and, and you were to draw the positive x-axis, which would run something like that. Well, if you're looking for that angle in red from the positive x-axis, it would be this, right? So that, that's the angle that you're looking for. Um, what you're going to need is you're going to need two angles. You're going to need this angle here, as well as this angle here. And if we sum up that yellow angle there and this green angle here, it should give us our total angle from the positive x-axis. So now let's just look for those two angles, right? So for the green angle, well, that's easily given as 60 degrees. So here you have 60 degrees. But what about this, uh, this yellow angle here? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to transpose this triangle here. Okay. So all I did is I just transposed this triangle from, from right up here. And now what we're going to do is we're going to be looking for this yellow angle. And then once we add that yellow angle here to the green angle of 60 degrees, we should be able to find our total direction measured counterclockwise from the positive x axis. Now, there's a couple ways to approach this to find that angle. You can use the law of cosines again, or you can apply the law of sines. Now, if you apply the, apply the law of sines, you'll actually find that there's an ambigu ambiguous solution. And the reason to that is because this is an actually, uh, it'll actually be treated as a side-side angle triangle because you're going to be using more sides than you are angles. And if you do that, it gets a lot more complicated because there's going to be two solutions to that yellow angle. Um, so the easier way to do it, or the more precise way of doing it, so that you get the exact one unique solution set, is to treat this as a side-side-side triangle, or an SSS, and then, again, apply the law of cosines. So if we treat this as an SSS triangle, side-side-side, um, we can just use the law of cosines again, so we'll have... Uh, and we're going to be looking again for the, for the, yel the yellow angle in place of the 45-degree angle. Um, so therefore, if we were to rearrange this, this equation here, then the opposite side, which would be on the opposite side of the equation, of, or FR in this case, for the 45 degree angle, we'd be using the 700, if that makes sense. Um, so let me just write this out. I think it'll clear things up a bit. So we'll have 700 equals the square root of 497 squared plus 450 squared minus 2 times 497 times 450 times the cosine of the angle, of the opposite angle of that 750, and that's just going to be, uh, I guess we could just call that alpha. Let's just call that angle alpha. And then again, that's for that yellow angle there. So we're going to take the square root of all of this. So sorry about that, not looking so neat. Um, but now we just square both sides, and you'll have 700 squared equals 497 squared plus 450 squared minus 2 times 297, sorry, 497 times 450 times the cosine of alpha. So now if I just solve for alpha, I'll just subtract 497 and 450 squared from both sides, and we'll have 700 squared minus 497 squared minus 450 squared. And then to isolate the cosine alpha, I'm just going to divide both sides by negative 2 times 497 times 450. And now this all equals cosine of alpha. But if I just want alpha, I'll just take the uh, inverse cosine of both sides. And this should now equal alpha. And if you plug that into your calculator, you'll find that that angle alpha equals uh, 95 point two degrees. So now for our, that yellow angle being equal to 95.2 degrees, um, we'll just do 95.2 degrees. And by the way, we'll, we'll call this final angle that we're looking for. I guess I just call it beta, the angle that we're looking for. So that equals 95.2 degrees plus 60 degrees, 60 degrees. And that's going to yield you with 155.2 degrees. And that's your direction for this resultant force.